welfare budget, and if you could just introduce yourself, please. You're welcome. Hi, Amy Muccio, Welfare Director. How's everything in the welfare department these days? A little cut last year. Oh, it's just great. <laughs> no, it's just. Pretty consistent. Or what? It's a little different from last year. You'll see that I've had a decrease this year, yeah. and a lot of that has to do with not because I don't have the requests, but because I don't have the ability to help those where they need to be, whether it's finding affordable housing in Wolfboro. We have a lot of people, families that were paying outside of Wolfboro to stay, other towns. Yeah, I've had a lot of relocations within the last year. Okay. Amy, is that, does that explain the $10,000 drop in the direct assistance for rent? Yes. Okay. Well, that answers my question. Yeah. Okay. I can't assist people if they can't prove that they can afford it. So, and that balance comes out with a lot of apartments now are eleven, twelve hundred dollars, and they just can't do that. Okay. So it doesn't mean I can't assist them to go somewhere else where it's more affordable. But that's just a one-time thing in the year. Okay. Other questions, Amy? Okay. Let's start at the uh, one hundred series. Two hundred series. How's that, Peter? Uh, Two hundred series. Three hundred. Six hundred. Eight hundred, <clears throat> Amy, the uh, direct assist utilities, that's for oil, heat, and stuff like that. It is for heat. Okay. Now, what's that group up there in Tamworth? Uh, I can't think of the name right now. Yeah. Do you work with them? I do. I, I help most of my clients fill out their application. We pass them on the, we do that first. Right. Um, unless they're actually fully out and then they can make you know, a lot of Okay. How, how long, how, can someone apply every month for oil heat or? No, it's a one time. One time thing. So if, if they get one fill up from CAP, can they come to you for another fill up? Um, well, I just can make you a fill up. Okay. Okay. So a lot of times they'll start with me because they're happy to pay me $15. Not any, you know, action plans or any of the things. And that would include the assistance if you take it until January. Okay. Do you find most of the heating companies trying to help you out or? Most of the heating companies in the last two years have been really great about doing budget plans for people who may be able to. Okay. Thank you. I guess that's uh, it for welfare and there's a decrease of 10.87%, uh, almost $10,000. Do you need anything else, Amy, you want to talk to us about, or any other? Okay. Good job. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Thank you. Yep. Thank you.
Would I to commend Amy for being one of the few departments that have seen a decrease. <laughs> That's sort of a heresy in our program. <laughs> you betcha. Thank you, Amy. Evening, Chief. If you want to uh, introduce your, your number two man, your captain, and whoever else is with you, I see the couple of commissioners in here. If you introduce them also to the committee. I got you. We haven't approved your budget yet. <laughs> and what pens would you like me to buy? <laughs> this fire department budget. Yeah. Police budget. In the front. Yeah. Okay, Chief. You want to introduce who is with you tonight? Thank you. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. I'm uh, Chief D. Ron with the local police department. To my right. We got to see the police commissioners who's here for police commissioners too. I think. Why don't you introduce those two gentlemen? There may be some guys that don't know those two, those two men. I'm not sure. Really? Oh yeah, this place is bad acoustics. <laughs> Can you just introduce the two police commissioners that are here? There may be a couple of gentlemen here that don't recognize them. Thank you, Chief. Okay, go ahead, Chief. You want to just give a little summary of uh, what's been going on this past year? I would. Thank you very much. Uh, as a brief overview, uh, this coming year, the Wilshire Police Department's budget is up slightly overall for fiscal year 18 at present by 2.65% prior to any Board of Selectmen Investments proposal approval. Non-discretionary spending is up 9.30%, and discretionary spending is down 3.27%. All the non-discretionary increases are due to items beyond my control, such as the negotiated FY17 NEPBA police union contract that calls for 3% step increase for the rank and file in FY18, as well as increases in the town's portion of health and dental insurance, along with a slight increase in social security payments and other series 200 line items. All this amounts to a modest increase of 9.30% so far in non-discretionary funding, which I cannot regulate. This increase reflects the always constant cost of various insurances, social security fees, and other series 200 lines, which are beyond the PD's control, and whose figures are sent to us by the town finance office. Also <clears throat> important to note, this growth includes other expenses, such as liability insurance, which continues to increase due to frequent litigations. The good news is that some of these cost increases were offset by the hourly wage line, which is down 0.07%, which is quite remarkable, even with a 3% step. This is due to our recent new hires, the retirement of two senior officers, Chief Chase and Sergeant Keaton, and the promotion of Senior Patrolman Mark Libby to Captain. Just one more reason to promote from within. Of the 23 discretionary lines, the PD is down in six, up in three, while the remaining 14 remain level funded. Of significant importance this year is the request to add six hours per week to the budget, making two of our part-time staff members full-time. I am respectfully requesting that we add five hours per week to the administrative assistant and one hour per week for the police prosecutor. Both positions need to be funded and added to our full-time rosters as the demands of both have become too great to manage any other way. By doing so, we create greater efficiencies within the PD while freeing up valuable sergeant and supervisory time to the patrol and dispatch shifts, thereby increasing officer presence and frequency on the streets and creating dispatcher efficiency, all while working to limit police department and town liability. Most of these costs associated with doing so have been made possible by savings elsewhere in the budget and by the hiring and promoting of officers from within the PD. Additionally, revenues brought into the PD and the monies received for the school resource officers portion of the, uh, of the SRO funding more than cover this request. The budgets before this honorable committee reflect a great deal of hard work and a bit of anguish in trying to stay within the town management guidelines for fiscal year 18. 
We take this task very seriously. The PD traditionally has not asked for very much over the past 12 or so years. With that in mind, I have submitted one capital outlay project this year for consideration. It is for mobile data terminals and the installation of e-ticket system. Before you, each uh, one of you gentlemen has a packet uh, that describes the mobile data terminal, gives a brief executive summary, and uh, talks about how they connect to the J1 system of communications that the, the state is going to be going to. So if you just please, uh, when we get to that portion of the budget, if you can review that information, that may answer some of your questions. Uh, that was supposed to get out to the budget committee members ahead of time. I don't know if they did, but I just wanted to be uh, prepared and provide the gentleman with a copy of that. Thank you. These items are, <coughs> are essentially state mandated in all but name only and are, are inseparable from each other though they've been submitted as three separate requests per the town office. Additionally, the PD has been the recipient of a grant that was applied for last year to ease the town's burden of moving toward this technology. Last year's grant has been pushed back for execution in FY18 so that we may be able to take advantage of this opportunity. The total cost of this project is approximately $65,625. The granted amount is approximately $19,525, leaving a remaining balance of approximately $46,045, which would have to be funded by the town. This is, this is the last year this grant will be made available. After this, it will be up to the town tax base to purchase this equipment. It would make sense to fund the project this coming year to take advantage of the federally funded grant opportunity. This new expense reveals the ever-changing protocols of law enforcement operations, not just in Carroll County, but also in the state of New Hampshire. By way of explanation, with the state's adoption of the J-1 communications platform, protocols are changing. MDTs, or mobile data terminals, will be, will be required to transfer data and information, not just to the state DMV and Department of Safety, but also to the courts. MDs, MDTs provide that near instant communication venue to state via Bluetooth technology and Wi-Fi, whereby officers can assess driver and criminal information during a motor vehicle stop with the click of a scanner. The e-ticket system, also known as the, the electronic ticket system, will soon be required whereby summonses are sent directly from the officer's cruiser straight to the state or the courts via the MDT system using special software and Bluetooth technology once the violation has been issued. Additionally, other information may be transmitted by officers to other officers, car to car, or to the state or courts using the J-1 system for any variety of reasons. Unfortunately, this equipment is now a need and not a want, and we must have these systems to remain relevant in law enforcement. This system has been used by the state police and most other agencies in the state for almost the past 10 years now. Also important to note in this year's budget, the one area in which I requested an additional $2,730, and this is in the officer's uniform line. The cost for this uniform dry cleaning for the, <coughs> I'm sorry, this is the cost for uniform dry cleaning for the entire PD. As unnecessary as this expense may seem to some, I have it in, in here for very good reason. Let me explain. Uniforms are the property of the Wolf Grove Police Department, not the staff. At the end of an officer's career with the PD, these uniforms, jackets, and other items are collected, and if serviceable, they're reissued. We do this to cut down on the expense of purchasing these outfits. <coughs> Additionally, blood-borne pathogens, toxic drug sensors such as fentanyl, carfentanil, and other diseases such as AIDS, giardia, E. coli, tuberculosis, hepatitis, A2F, salmonella, and other infectious vermin such as bed bugs, lice, and parasites are all concerns that officers have when dealing with the public while making arrests. Our officers are often in unclean and unsanitary environments, making those apprehensions, executing search warrants, and performing their daily functions. The Great Dane case is just one example where virtually every member of the department was exposed to the danger with the Giardia parasite. During that detention and search warrant execution operation, extensive precautions were utilized to prevent exposure and transfer of this dangerous bug, not just to the officers and the staff taking part in the operation, but to the officer's family, town officers, and the public as well. With the various threats facing today's police officers, it is paramount that the uniforms be clean, sanitized, and serviceable to compress. It is a known fact that washing machines cannot routinely get up to the 140, 160 degree temperatures required to effectively clean these garments and kill these public health threats. Incidentally, by having these uniforms professionally cleaned, we extend the life of the uniform and cut down on unneeded clothing replacement. Lastly, most of the Wolf Road departments, including the Public Works Department, garage, electric, water, and sewer, already have professional laundering and dry cleaning services for their employees. 
and they've had it now for some years. In terms of the dispatch budget this year, there are no significant changes to report and no exceptional requests. In the animal control budget, we have added $1,000 to the outside services line. This addition will be used for various cost overruns and ACO coverage for the ACOs on vacation or otherwise unavailable. Coverage at this point is a must and can no longer just be absorbed by other agencies, departments, or towns. This year, we've seen an increase in very serious animal abuse cases where ACO coverage and support <coughs> is paramount. Expected outcomes. With the passage of this budget and its accompanying addendums, we expect to become more efficient moving many administrative tasks from sergeants and officers to administrative assistants and police prosecutors. With the addition of the MT MDTs, the officers will become more e efficient and spend much more time <coughs> on the road while cutting down on precious communication time, thereby creating efficiencies in the communications department as well. And finally, with professional monitoring and dry cleaning services, I expect to improve public and officer safety while increasing the lifespan of our PD uniforms and cut costs of uniform procurement, all while looking good at the same time. Pending the Honorable Committee's questions, that's all I have. Let's get into the budget. Thank you, Chief. Can we have copies of those for the next board meeting so, so we can review them? I can't hear you. Can we have a copy of those so that we can review them later, your, your statement? I gave it to Leanne already. Oh, you do? Okay, oh, great. I have the capital. Right. If you just do it in, our, in the minute. In the email. Do you have the Do you have anything on the uh, mobile data terminal? Yes. Can I get a couple? You guys have that? Yes. yes. I guess Brian and I are the only one that didn't get it. Use it. Uh, okay. I know J1, so you use it. Okay. Had a meeting on J1 today, so all of a sudden I have it again. I said I had one meeting on J1 already today, so. I just need the mobile the data executive. terminal. I was talking with Chief Cahill from Sunapee yeah. about it. So. I have one now, thank you. Okay. Okay, if anyone could just use the microphones when they want to say something, I guess we're having some issues with hearing. Uh, thank you, Chief, for your uh, explanation of this year's budget, and we'll jump right into the uh, I guess the 100 series. Uh, supervisor salaries, that's set up by the uh, police commissioner by contract, the MOU, with the chief and uh, the captain. Uh, what are the salaries for next year going to be? Can you break them down for us? <coughs> the salaries for the chief and the captain? What, what the salaries are going to be, how this breaks out on the, the total, total amount. We have a, we have a, we have 192, 989. How does that break down as far as, I see there's one opt out on the insurance. Okay. Because in order, in order to calculate, we're going to have to do the 13 weeks. And then you don't have their salaries? 39 weeks. Hang on a minute. Okay. Three-way books. What else is needed? Good Thanksgiving. Good Thanksgiving. Good. Get your preservatives back? Yeah. Actually, before we, we had <coughs> Thanksgiving dinner, that we climbed up the castle back and watched the mouth show out. And oh, it was a nice day to do it, too. Yeah. Had the pups to go. Okay, Mr. Chairman. My pups to be the yeah. The salary for the captain uh, next year will be $87,088.96. The salary for the chief is uh, $105,932. Mm -hmm. Okay. 
No, and I need an education here. I need, a, I need an education here. Who establishes the pay for the uh, supervisors? The police commission. Okay. Is there is there anything in this as to um, so much is increased percentage each year? Yes. You're the ones that establish the pay scale for the police chief and, and the captain. Is that right? Okay. Is there any guidance that you have regarding the increase? Uh, John, uh, if I can re respond, I have a, a copy of the letter here that was sent to me by the chairman of the police commission on August 31st. Uh, informing me that the police commission had voted to provide a 4% cost of living allowance to both the chief and the captain uh, for the FY18 budget. Is anybody here checking, uh, following what this COLA is? Cost of living increase nationwide? Uh, there's been a lot of uh, communication amongst the towns and about what the cost of living increases are that the different towns are providing. Beg your pardon? There, there's, I, I have seen a lot of uh, back and forth exchange of in information between uh, different towns about what level of cost of living increases they are providing. And what is it? Well, they vary. Uh, you know, some are as low as 1.5, some are as high as like 3 or 3.5. But we're, we're taking something like 4.7 here, is that right? Uh, this is, uh, uh, again, I'm, I'm reading you the letter that I was sent by the police commission <coughs> saying that they granted a 4% cost of living adjustment for those two positions. Well, in the literature we have here, it shows 4.71 percent. That's 2018. Increase. Over what was budgeted last year. No. And I assume that is. Well, I guess the way you do that is you go back and make last take last year's. But the only way you can tell that right at this particular point is take last year's budget book and see what was calculated. See how it compared to this. The 2017 budget. Yes. Okay, so you're saying the cost of living is somewhere between one one and a half percent to three percent that you've seen. Is that correct? Well, the cost of living is something you can get from the uh, uh, Bureau of Labor's, uh, the Bureau of Statistics. It's been generally running about two percent, I believe. Yeah, two percent. Mm -hmm. So we're we're giving uh, we're recalculating a whole of about 4.7 percent, is that correct? In this budget, no. <coughs> not overall. Okay, that's what, all I wanted to know. Quick, quick question, what did the rest of the police officers in the police department get for a raise? Well, the, the uh, members of the bargaining unit are getting approximately 3 percent. How much? 3. Okay. Uh, the non-union employees are getting uh, what the selectmen voted was a 2.5 percent salary. Mm -hmm. Uh, adjustment. Yes, sir. Yes, John, gentlemen, and lady, excuse me. Um, okay, so this uh, letter says 4% um, cost of living allowance to both the chief and the captain for the fiscal year 2018. Uh, as Dave stated, the um, non union employees and all of the department heads. Uh, were granted a 2.5 percent raise. Uh, it's true that the union contracts uh, came up to about 3 percent raise, but I think there was a, a give back worked into that, Dave, right? Isn't that why you, uh, something to do with payout accrual or something like that? So. Yeah, we did get some, some uh, give backs okay. in exchange for that, yes. Okay, so, so they, that, there was some give backs with that, that 3 percent mm -hmm. contract. Okay. They didn't, the, get, they didn't get it for free. Okay. Now, uh, it's true 
the, I, in fact, I just looked it up uh, yesterday. Uh, as of the end of October, the rate of inflation is 2.04%. Um, and it's a safe bet that uh, Social Security increases for next year will be 2%. And uh, department heads, as I said, 2.5%. And in fact, you guys share a building uh, with the fire department and the fire chiefs are getting 2.5%. So I would like a justification for a 4% raise from somebody. So as part of the uh, NEPBA FY17 contract, the rank and file is getting a 3% step, which I will refer to in my uh, executive summary. The other thing that that contract calls for is the creation of two corporate staff sergeant position uh, at the end of December 31st, 2018. The intent behind the commissioners to grant the 4% COLA to the captain and I was to create some additional distance between the sergeant and the captain and the captain and the chief. In other, in other words, they needed a, a space on the matrix to be able to place the staff sergeant. You, you do and and what, what is the distance? We don't know. That hasn't been determined yet. That will be determined by the police commission at a later point in time. Uh, well, quite frankly, I think it's too much. I'll, you know, I'll be blunt about it, uh, as I usually am. And, uh, but I wouldn't entertain any motion yet or forward any motion uh, without some other... Uh, um, comments from uh, this committee, so. The MOU for the captain and I? No, it's not a one-year contract. It's what? It's not a one-year contract. Until age 67. It's an open-ended contract until age 67. It does address it does address colas and so forth. To what extent? It it uh, it, it gives the uh, discretion to the police commission. Well, the police commission has the discretion on all salaries, but I mean, does it specifically identify that you are to get a cost of living increase every year, or does it specifically state that that is what that cost of living is? It doesn't state exactly what the cost of living. Can you uh, clarify what it, what is an MOU? What, what what do those initials stand for? Memorandum, Memorandum of understanding. understanding. Say what? Memorandum of understanding. Okay. It's like a contract. Chief, what what limitations if down the road when you eventually retire, do you have the same retirement as far as buyout as other department heads, or do you have a different type of buyout on your end? <coughs> I don't believe the contract specifically talks about buyouts. Okay. So in that case, David, would he, how does that affect the chief? Is, is he going to be led into just getting, what is it, 30 days or 30, 240 hours, whatever it is, for a buyout? Now, you're talking about the leave buyback? Right. If the, if leave time buyback? Yeah. Under the town's uh, personnel policy, it's uh, uh, for... Um, 35 hour a week employees is limited to 350 hours, which is 10 weeks. Okay. We're at 480 hours. You guys are at 480. We are. Okay. Okay. Uh, four, 400 hours, right? 400 hours. 400 hours? Yeah. For, for the captain and I, we're at 480. For the rank and file, I believe it's 400. Okay. Uh, any other questions on the supervisor salaries? One question I have, and it seems um, that's redundant, but since the captain's position is a new position and that the, it's a new chief, 
When was the last time that an actual COLA was uh, put in and put in place? We received a, uh, well, I didn't receive a COLA last year because I got a promotion. And same thing for the captain. So for the two of us, it would have been the previous year. So as I understand it, uh, this percentage increase is for the two top positions, the chief and the captain, and that's so that you, there's a, a distance so that we, the sergeant won't feel slighted in some way as far as like what he's getting for pay? Is that my understanding? That, that's essentially correct, yeah. It's, it's building in a gap to be able to place the staff sergeant. And when do these positions I remember talking about it last year, these positions... December 31st, 2018, uh, they, they're created, and it's going to fall to the commission to determine compensation. Okay. For the sergeants? For the, for the staff sergeant and the two corporal positions. So we have a chief, a captain, a sergeant, and two corporals. Uh, that'll be correct. Okay. And then patrolmen after that. Then what? Patrolmen after that. That's then, then patrolmen. Well then, can can we revisit this line if um, uh, you know when we find out what these numbers are going to be? Can we revisit this line? The the main thing to remember is the police commission sets the salaries, hires and fires, and sets the salaries. You can cut this line, but they are entitled to go any other place in here to get that money, so the chief makes what he what he's going to make, what they've agreed to make. Is that a fair interpretation, David, of what the police commission's responsibility that's, is? That's correct. Okay. Okay, thank you. Yes, sir. Hand him a microphone. Microphone over to the commissioner. We needed to see that there was a significant uh, differential between the various ranks. If there was not a significant difference, then no one would want to go to a sergeant with all the responsibility he's got where he is maybe two cents shift differential over Chief Rondo could speak more to it, but this is not like a number we just threw down. This was a number that comes about by taking a look at the organization of the police department. Those of you who have been police officers before, managers of companies, you know that if you lose somebody that has been with you for 10 years, knows all the customers, knows all the clients, knows the knows when somebody is out of line, you lose that intelligence. And it takes you years to pick it up again. So the point of the 4.71% is to start making a differential between the different ranks in the department so that we do not lose people. We have lost people, but we fire them. We have not lost anybody He retired. Chris, Chris yeah. Keaton. Yeah, now that's a different different story. Right. Uh, but again, what you need to have in this department that we have. 
haven't had for many years is a differential that will allow somebody with the knowledge, experience, desire to move up in the ranks, take on a whale of additional responsibility, and get paid for it. Thank you. One thing that would help me is if you could give me a chart, a flow chart from, you said the last 10 years you've been trying to put this in a place. If you can f create for me a flow chart where what we started with 10 years ago as far as officers and, and pay and, and different ranks and so on and show me how you arrived here from there. That would help me understand your logic and your thinking. I don't know if that's possible or not, but that would help me out. I mean, it's easy, it's easy for you to tell us your thinking and logic, but it would be nicer for me as a person on the budget committee to see how you arrive at these figures and what you're trying to do and what you're trying to accomplish, both from way back when to the current and to the future. If you had some kind of flow that was understandable, doesn't have to be nitpicky kind of thing, but some kind of flow chart that I could understand more than trying to grasp what you're telling me now, other than just, I get the sense of what you're saying to me, but a flow chart would be better for me. Well, I'm afraid that uh, we're not going to get that <laughs> flow chart. Um, nice, nice idea, but uh, oftentimes when you start a project, uh, you don't know that you started the project. And I think if you go back to when uh, Stu Chase came on board, uh, you would know that in the budgets that we have submitted, we have submitted budgets that are all with the objective of the plan that the police commission has evolved. And uh, you're looking at two guys that have been on for 10 years, and uh, we just haven't kept that kind of record. But I can tell you, if you want the chief to speak to it, uh, he did go, and we did research with all of the police departments that are competitive with us. And by competitive, I think you know what I mean. Um, because we don't want to lose officers to Alton, we don't want to lose them to Laconia. We don't want to lose them to anybody unless we have made up our mind that they do not fit and then we will terminate them. We, we do not carry uh, losers, if you will, on our payroll. Just to, just to follow up, one of the things we have to do is we have to treat everyone the same as far as pay and everything like that. I, I, understand the chief's position, but you, buddy, you guys have to be cognitive of what other town employees get paid as far as being a department head. And I support the chief getting his raise, but it's about $60 less than what the town manager makes. So I just want to keep that in, in the back of your head. It's nice that we can, we can attract people by having extra money, but we can't always throw money at something just to keep someone around. And I just want to make you cognitive of that. I understand that. Yeah. That is not to denigrate the chief of police because the one thing you want to have in this town is safety. You want to have this town where it is not taken over by drugs, where it's not taken over by strong arms, where it's not taken over by sexual assaults. You want to have somebody who knows how to do that. And if you take a look at the curriculum vitae and the background of our chief, given the fact that he has been a bird colonel in the Army, the fact that he has commanded battalions, um, I think being $60 less than the town manager is not bad. Okay, I, I was just making a statement. That's all. Thank you.
Okay, hourly wages. So I have a question. Are we going to revisit this later on like we talked about? Or is this just going to go by the wayside? I would like to. It's fine. I'm going to revisit less. I would like to see some more numbers on the, uh, the other officer's salaries. Sergeants, when you, I, I, if I heard you guys correctly, you have not granted raises to the sergeants yet. Is that correct? No, Sorry. no, that's that's not okay. That's not an accurate statement. I think the question was when was the last time the captain and I received a cola, and we said we didn't get one last year because we received promotion. So the last cola I received would have been two years ago, but up until that point, I'd received constant pay raises. Uh, I get one every year, uh, and everybody else does too. Now, if you want to see what the, the rank and file makes, that's fine. I think uh, Pete Chamberlain can get you that documentation very easily. He has it all. He has the pay matrix. Okay, broken broken down into uh, this budget, Pete. We can uh, we can see I that. I no, there's two things here. I don't. I I can give you the you know the the collective bargaining number and people's salary for sure. That's that's that's, that's for, fine. I I, 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 yeah. I, I want to see what the difference is. You know, the, uh, these guys are talking about the gap closing up, I, I getting a little too close, and you know I. I'd like to see that. Yeah. You know, just so you know as well, there's a very there's a very close gap, and there has been for years. And one of the problems in the police department has been that the the close gap between the senior patrolman and sergeant, in some cases, it's, it's very little money. It's it's a matter of it, it really is a matter of cents, 17 cents or 25 okay. cents. It's in that neighborhood. That's the thing when they addressed when they addressed it in the in the NEPBA contract. That's what they were trying to do. Now, look, I'm not part of union negotiations. I'm not on the negotiating team, and neither is the captain. And, and I wasn't when they came up with the contract two years ago. But that's one of the issues they're attempting to fix. They're, what they're, by, by the creation of the corporal's position and the staff sergeant position, they're, what, what they're trying to do is build in some depth between ranks. So when I have a vacancy, when I have a lieutenant's vacancy, for example, or a sergeant's vacancy, there's a senior patrolman or a corporal that says, I want to compete for that because, because there is something more than a 17 cent pay raise to take on the additional duties and responsibilities that are incumbent upon a corporal or a sergeant. There, there's got to be some monetary incentive to do so. We don't want to get to where Rochester is when they have a lieutenant's exam. They have to go outside the police department because they can't get any sergeants to take the lieutenant's exam. That, that is brutal on an organization. Morale, that's not where we want to go. That was the whole point to this. I, I understand that, but you have to give some consideration to the fact that all of the department heads got a 2.5% raise for next year. <coughs> and your raise is twice the rate of inflation. So when another department head comes in here and tells us, hey, you guys gave twice as much or almost twice as much to the cops as we're getting, it's not fair. That's the point I'm trying to make. I would like to see those numbers. I would like to see everybody's salaries, and I would like to revisit this. You want to see a copy of the MOU? The MOUs. I think I have that here. No. We have that in here somewhere. Uh, I, yeah, you can t you can show me that later. Okay. I, I don't know. I don't think I have a copy of it, so that's what. Yeah. Okay. That's it. So do we want to get a copies of the MOU? I don't have one. Do you have one? Yeah, that's why. Now this four percent. Cost of living. Are you, are you getting a, a raise on top of that? No. That, okay. That's All right. That's raise. okay. Okay. Where does this four, where does this four point seven one percent? I believe, go? sir, that would be the compounding from last year. Okay. So I think what you're not taking into consideration is when when there is an increase in this line item, it's including the previous thirteen weeks. Okay. And that would be the compounding. Okay. That's why if you look at the rank and file, if you go down to line item one. You heard that I briefed that they received a, a 3% step, right? And the number down there is 3.76%. That's the compounding from year to year to year that I don't, I don't think you're taking into consideration. Well, this the, the, if, you do, if you do the math out, the math works. It, it works out to the penny, okay? 
So uh, I know you're looking at the 4.71, and I know you're looking at the 3.76, but mm -hmm. the math is the math is 4, 4.0 for the captain and I, and it's 3.0 for the rank and file. Well, funny mathematics here. Okay, so we'll come back and revisit the uh, the 113. That's what I take it. Everyone wants to do. Yes. Okay. Thank you. We want copies of the MOU. Yes. yes. Okay. Okay. Now two on to 114. Uh, you originally requested $700,725. So somehow between the department request, the town manager's approval, and the selectmen, it went up $26,000. What was that? How was that changed? This extra twenty-five thousand dollars. Oh, okay. Apparently, that's the increase is, is in there for the administrative assistant. Is in there. That's what happened. That's a, min a full-time administrative assistant and also a full-time prosecutor. <laughs> This is only about 19,000. Yeah, I see it. The difference, yeah. the difference is right yeah. here. Yeah. The difference is right here on these two sheets. Net difference. Right. Yep. Between the minus 19 to 18 and the that, plus 26 right. to 91. That does not include the prosecutor's position. right there. <coughs> does not include what? The prosecutor's position. Okay, thank you. Don, I have a strong feeling here, a, a concern, because remember back when we were list, had, had the Parks and Rec admin in here. Right. Everybody was very anxious, and it was supported by most of the people of the board to cut out Christine's full-time help. Correct. Okay. I, 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 we're going to revisit that, I hope. Yes, sir. I've got some statistics that will show you the, uh, the amount of work that they do there. I don't let's see not it talk here. about let's not talk about Pax and Rec, John. <laughs> let's I'm, focus I'm on on I'm this. Not. I don't see any justification for this. In fact, I'm concerned about the fact that we see that in the um, uh, 200 series, an increase of 37,000, or and or about six percent. Now, I don't know what caused that. But we, I see health increase of 12.1%. I see um, workers' comp of 25%, 33%. I don't know what the cause of that is. <coughs> the cause of this position going from part-time to full-time. What we've had, Chief, we've, we've, we've talked about trying not to make any more full-time positions this year, trying to stay where we're at. In the Parks and Rec, we, had, we have two people working 20 hours apiece, equal 40 hours. And we voted not to support the making of a, another, making a full-time position for one person because of the associated cost. And that's one of the issues that I have for this time because we've told Parks and Rec no. And we pre pretty much are trying to stop making any more full-time positions for this year. And that's, where, that's what we're discussing. I don't know if you've been following the meetings or, or not. So, uh, Because it does, it, it may be one hour increases the budget by quite a bit. Because once you make that person, the prosecutor, a full-time person, then he's going, we're going to have to start paying for his retirement and his waiver out of insurance and other things. We're just not, I'm personally not prepared to do that personally this year uh, as in adding any more full-time positions. Uh, but again, if you want to try to sell it to the other members, uh, go right ahead. I just don't see what one hour, making a person work one more hour would make that much difference 
So it actually does. So let's just take a minute, Char, real quick with the administrative assistant. Um, one of the complaints that I get off, um, and, and I just received it from Commissioner Goodgame uh, a few days ago, was uh, you guys aren't on the road enough. I, I get this from citizens. I get it from elected officials quite often. And the reality is um, they're, they're right. The, the men are not on the road as, as much as they should be. I think as much uh, as they were when, when Chief Black was the chief of police. And there are some very good reasons for that. There have been a lot of changes in protocols with the courts in terms of how complaints get filed, uh, how hearings are, are handled, <coughs> when uh, DWIs need to be submitted, and recently now with this uh, inception of felonies first. Uh, they have to be, uh, in, that, in that particular case, felonies now have to be in the superior court the next day after the arrest. That means that if we're arresting somebody at 2 o'clock in the morning for a felony drug possession uh, or felony DWI or, or whatever felony of, of flavor you have, then we have to get all the reports, all the Gerstein affidavits, all the complaints. Everything has to be submitted and ready for the court at 8 o'clock in the morning. It's just the way it is. Again, it's the changing roles and protocols of law enforcement. Sergeants, <coughs> oftentimes, are the only ones that have the wherewithal to be able to get into the computer system that have the knowledge of what the complaint needs to detail, can write the Gerstein affidavits. So my, my key supervisors are off the streets. The reporting to the state, the NIVERS, and the reporting to the FBI and so forth, oftentimes requires a sergeant because they're the ones that are versed with the system, they're the ones that are, refer that are versed with the reporting requirements. Taking those duties away from a sergeant and putting them in the hands of the administrative assistant at a full-time uh, level is going to free up that supervisor to do what I paid them a lot of money to do, which is to supervise, to be out on the road, to be sharing their knowledge with the officers, to be, share to, to be mentoring those officers, to be training those officers. That's what we need to do. We need to have our supervisors out on the street. By providing the five hours, the additional five hours a week to the administrative assistant, and the one hour a week to the prosecutor is gonna do just that. Ultimately, if I'm looking at creating efficiencies, this is the easiest and cheapest way to do it, Mr. Chairman, versus hiring more officers. You, gentlemen, you, you don't have to like it, but that's the world we're living in right now. We are we are maxed out. I have, I have, I'm looking, I'm struggling for areas to, to create efficiencies. These and the MDTs, um, once, that, once, once we MDT? do this. What's that initial stand for? The mobile data terminals, and you, you have an information yep. packet. Thank okay, thank you. There for you. Um, once once we, we execute these, I'm all out of good ideas. Why don't you try the mobile data terminals for a year and see how that works out, see if that doesn't help your efficiencies rather than adding additional hours or employees. Would that be a fair, fair thing to do? See if those don't increase. Uh, <coughs> using the mobile data for a year, see if that doesn't help out without adding the uh, additional hours for the two full-time employees. Would that be okay? No, that, that I don't think it's a solution. It's a pretty expensive uh, uh, setup and I thought that in reading the literature, and 90% of it I didn't understand, but uh, that a lot of information would automatically go to the courts and, and uh, other agencies. Yeah. And would that have an effect, the MBTs, would that have an effect on the point you were making about uh, the felonies and et cetera, with paperwork being ready for the court at 8 o'clock in the morning? That, that's correct. It's, it's, a, uh, it's a system that the state is going to be going to where, where tickets are sent directly from the cruisers either to the state DMV or to the courts, and they'll tie into other communications.
Education's plan. Okay. Well, to John's point, um, it would seem to me that if the MBTs are going to do what we think they're going to do and what you've presented here, then the necessity of having <coughs> the um, two full-time people created by the addition of five hours on one and one on the other may be double dipping. I have a question on the uh, MDTs. Uh, my question is, is, um, is it a state mandated thing? It, it's, not a, it's not a mandate per se. It's, it's, it's all but a mandate. This is the way the state is going. Fiscal year 18 is the last year where the grant will be available. We have a grant uh, that will pay for some of it. After that, we're going to be on our own. How long has the grant been around? The grant, the grant's been available for about the last 10 years. Okay. Grant for what? <coughs> for the, the e-tickets? Um, yes. MDTs. Okay. MDTs and e-tickets, that's correct. Thank you. I hear you. I hear you. But I did want to get out the fact that the MDTs are in fact <coughs> in effect on a, a fair proportion of what you're faced with now. That's correct. Okay. There's no, there's no question about that. I mean, I'm, I'm a dinosaur, but I, I, uh, I, I, I had some experience with the uh, <laughs> MDTs, and uh, they, the technology is incredible. And, and uh, actually, uh, that is a very good point. I, th I think it will make things a lot more efficient. I was actually just agreeing with the chief. Uh, the, the mobile data terminals are going to be the wave of the future. You are going to be forced into them no matter what. That is the way the state's going. And the, the stats I saw today that the production level from tro troopers or officers has been going up because of these terminals. So, I mean, I understand the chief that I agree with him. We have to do it sooner or later. It, it makes, yeah, it makes sense. This will provide eight, maybe nine units, which will out, out, outfit the entire patrol fleet, if you will. Um, and so this will, this will, this will, um, this will be good. This is, this is really. Without that grant, this will be a considerable cost down the road, kicking the can it'll, down it'll, the road. It'll, invariably, there'll be more money next year. Much more. Yeah, it won't be this. It won't be the sixty-five thousand. I don't think here. The problem is seventy-five. It'll be. It'll be something in that neighborhood. What about the ongoing costs for the MDTs and various subscriptions, the yearly subscription that you have to town has to pay? Is it part of it? Yeah, I believe there is. Chief, in your packet, you're going to see where we filled out the, the uh, capital outlay. And it's all broken down as part of that. There is, there is a, uh, a subscription fee and, and uh, some other minor costs associated with it. That'll be throughout the year. Of the year. Um, the, there's also, at least initially, there will be a cost for the uh, airtime. Some of that's going to be mitigated by the FirstNet, if I'm not mistaken. So FirstNet is another communication system uh, which, which is essentially going to tie in all law enforcement within the state of New Hampshire to each other. And um, there will be some of that is being made free of charge, but FirstNet is not online just yet. It will be coming online within the next three years, next three years. If everything goes right, yeah.
So is the prosecutor doing uh, the felony hearings or is the county attorney's office doing anything? Does, does the county attorney do that? I'm sorry, what was your question again? On the, you mentioned felonies are handled by the prosecutor. The, is, the felonies it, first? Yes, yeah, he doing the hearings up in the Superior Court? He's not doing the hearings in the Superior Court. We get the paperwork together for a felony that's going, going to be prosecuted by the county attorney's office, and it goes to the county attorney's office, and then the Superior Court goes to two locations. Have you requested assistance from the county attorney's office and been refused? Are you handling any cases? I've never been refused uh, any support from the county attorney's office, but it's not their job to, to prepare this paperwork. It's our work. Right, but you can go to them for, for uh, mm -hmm. if you have questions or things like that. We can, but, no, but at 2 o'clock in the morning, it's, it's not their responsibility. It's our responsibility. Okay. We have to have the packet ready for them in the morning to be submitted to the superior <laughs> And anyone can do the Gernstein, Gernstein, though, right? It doesn't have to be the arresting officer. Can't someone else prepare it? Anybody can do the Gernstein, but it makes sense to have the officer that's making the arrest do the Gernstein affidavit. Okay. Thank you, Chief. I have a question. Yeah. Uh, it seems we have uh, three gentlemen on this uh, committee who were not here the last time we dealt with this. And um, I remember... Uh, adding a, a quite a few hours to the uh, prosecutor. Uh, in fact, you pitched it um, a while back. Was it five or six years ago? Yeah. Uh, uh, do you remember uh, how many hours the prosecutor, prosecutor had at that time and how many hours we added? We, we brought it up to 34 because we didn't want to participate in the New Hampshire retirement system. Retirement system. system. Okay. And from what number, though? Wh where was the prosecutor uh, at? Was, wasn't it like 25 first when it first started? 25 and then 30 and 34, somewhere in there. 20, 20. I think he was around 30 hours when you brought him up to 34 hours. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was, a, what, was it two years ago? I, I think it was a little more than two years. I don't, did, Steve, do you remember that? I don't, wish I did. Yeah, yeah. so um, I just wanted to throw that out there uh, for the guys who were, were not here for that. But, yeah. Um, you know, so that it, it did happen in the past, in a recent past, actually. It wasn't, wasn't too long ago, but right. I, I, it was longer than two years ago. Okay, we'll put that on the revisit list, I guess. Beg your pardon? Put that on the revisit list. It seems to me, if I may comment before you sure. go on to the next thing, it seems to me that the issue here with these two... Um, It seems to me that the issue here with the two permanent positions being proposed by the chief vis-a-vis -vis the current part-time situation with the prosecutor, the administrative assistant, is the fringe benefits. That's the number that we're worried about, right? Because well, the wages themselves are nothing. It's the fringe benefits you've created. By well, the, creating I, I disagree the on the wages. Is I that right? I disagree on the wages. That's, they are something. You know, you, even though you're adding one more hour, it's still a, a wage increase plus the raises. I, I would say that it, looking at the prosecutors, that's probably what the county attorney makes this year. I won't, I won't swear my life on it, but it's got to be pretty close to it. Who is the chief law enforcement officer for the county? John, I have one yes, John. I would appreciate. If, if we could get a wiring diagram of your organization, that is chief, captain, then you've got, what, three uh, non-commissioned? That's correct. Okay, and then what's below them? What I'd like to do is, you know, the military chain of command. So, so you have myself and the captain. Well, if you could, uh, you know, just draw it out and drop it off. Okay. Appreciate that. You, you got it. We can do that for you. Okay. Uh, geez. Let's see here. <laughs> hey, we all sat on the 100s. We've got, we move on to summer salaries.
And then, John, if it may yes, clarify, sir. please. What's that? Sure. If may clarify it. Line 113 is a revisit. Is that correct? Uh, wait just a second. I'm sorry. I didn't. I, 114. 113. Yeah, we're going to review uh, 113. And 114. Uh, 117. <clears throat> well, the combination of the two, 114 and 117, because they're related. Yes. You understand it correctly. And 114, right? And 114. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. yeah, because they're tied together. Yeah. Okay. All right, so I want to be clear. Uh, so 118, summer salaries. Uh, 130 elected officials. <clears throat> 140 uh, overtime. Peter, back on the uh, two years ago when we did the uh, the people voted to set up a revolving account, whatever it is, where detail money would go into that. What's going on with that? What's what's the stat? What's the status of that? Revolving. It's like at least special detail revolving account. Yeah. Is there money in that or? Yeah, but we're not. We're, Jeff and I are currently <coughs> analyzing that account. It'll be a little while before I can figure out what balance is in it. I think when I voted on it to support it, I was under the impression that that would be something that. Money would come out and pay the officers rather than carrying that money in the in the budget itself. Not, no, they're not. It's being they're being paid out of there. There's some question in my mind as, as to whether some of the retirement expenses that uh, have been paid out of the account, but it has it has nothing to do with the budgeted expenditure. It's the budget itself. Right. The issue I'm having with it has to do with uh, an accounting. It's an accounting issue between. Involves the employee's share of retirement having been paid out of the right account or not. Okay. The thing that uh, the one thing that I also uh, is really clear to me is there's money, there's a little bit of extra money per hour that's put aside to be reimbursed to departments for administrative fees. Yeah, use of the crews or whatever. That hasn't been going back to those folks. Okay. So we're trying to find some way of making that happen so that it's more of a it's, it's more of a you know, zero out at the end of the year kind of a deal but it is it's growing and it shouldn't be growing but okay it's, it's an accounting issue that shouldn't have an effect on the balance sheet once we get it corrected i think the some one of the other balance sheet item, items out there has to be corrected okay so this this line doesn't contain any Grants or payments or anything like that. It's all strictly overtime. Which one? You? Line line one forty. No, that's got no no. The, the the detail is all being paid out of this thirteen hundred account. Okay, and if there's grants, they get a grant. That money comes out of that also. And we take it out. It's actually there's another nine, approximately nine thousand dollars that uh, we got a check for eight eight four hundred or something like that that has to be credited. You don't see, but. Okay. Great, thank you, Peter. Sure. Okay, any questions on uh, anything else on the overtime? On? No. Nope. Okay. Someone's all set on that. Uh, okay, that's it on the uh, 100 series. Uh, 200. Uh, on, on the uh, health insurance, was, uh, was there a change of status? Somebody have a change of status? The health insurance. Oh, there's also, be aware too that I, I passed out a, uh, a uh, an updated uh, sheet yep. that reflects right. uh, the final rate change. Okay. So I was received, it was dated the 7th of November. Thanks, Pete. It, it, instead of having a, a 2.2 percent increase versus 4.15. I've taken the liberty of doing all of those changes in the budget. 
but at some right. point tonight we'll need a, uh, would like to have a vote to decrease the budget by $17,012 okay. to account. So that <laughs> ends up being an average of 1.1% increase over the course of next year. And my question, th um, the 210 line is up 33,383, which would not be reflected in that table. All, I, all I'm asking if somebody got married or. It will be uh, $2,733. Right. So it's only about 11%, 10% increase. Well, yeah, I, I, it all depends on who went from family to single. That's all I'm asking. It, you know, somebody. I don't know who that. Go from no insurance to uh, full insurance. No, the increase in average increase by that. Uh, uh, oh, that's it. That's the answer. Okay. Okay, thank you. Didn't when uh, when Chris was still on, didn't he have he had an opt out, didn't he, on his insurance? No, Chris, uh, he did at one point in time. Very good memory. Yeah. Um, but then uh, about I think it was three or four or five years ago, uh, Priscilla left the court, and then she. Oh, right, she came down here. Okay. Okay, uh, 300. Six hundred. The uh, the body armor does that everyone have stuff which is in a couple of years old now when you buy other stuff or? Has it always been 650 for officers' uniforms? Wasn't it 300 or 250 or something at one time? Oh, that's a dispatch too. Okay. So they get a check for the 650, and then they pay for their own stuff, or how does that work? Oh. Paid out. Okay. What's that? I don't think we're. <coughs> yeah, I'm looking at safety equipment and part of the police department. Is the uh, body armor and the office and the uniforms that is that a yearly expense? Like every year you do that. Is the. Uh, Body armor and the uh, uniforms, is that, is that every year? No, the body armor is purchased every year. Every five years. Every five years. Or if it's unauthorized, then uh, typically every five years. So 
Well, I guess my question is, so next year we wouldn't have that? And the dry cleaning, that's the one you were talking about in your opening statement, 2700 Okay. And you said that uh, all, a lot of other departments have dry cleaning. Is that correct, David? Or something like that? Pardon? I didn't realize you were. There. That's all right. Do all departments have something similar to this dry cleaning as the police department? Uh, well, uh, Public Works, uh, we provide uh, uniforms for Public Works, uh, electric department, um, so that they have a uh, professional uh, appearance, and also because <laughs> the work that they do, they get really filthy, uh, some of them, so, so that, that keeps them in clean, clean, appropriate clothing. particularly like the mechanics, they get totally covered with grease. They, 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 need, they need clean uniforms. You, Chief, in the safety equipment, you're over a couple of thousand dollars. Did you have to get some additional stuff that you didn't think about last year or? Like the Army Reserves, they get their uniforms free, and the ar the active full timers get have to pay for their own uniform. Okay, we all set on. We go on to one. Is it any point you know, five body armor units that are due to expire this year? No, that's the, the grant number. That's the amount of uh, vets that we were we were allowed. We were allowed to bring it up to five. So you don't know how many. Five at eight hundred, it says. So we can reimburse up to two percent of the quality. Oh, okay. And that's based on how much you do buy. You're estimating. You're estimating five. So it might be three. It might be. <laughs> Six hundred. to him. Seven hundred. I have a question on line uh, seven six zero vehicle. Okay, first thing, how many vehicles do you have? We have eleven and one radar trailer. Beg your pardon? Oh, that's the one that wasn't authorized but purchased, is that right? Yeah, that would be the same one, sir. Okay, 11 vehicles. Now, are these all of the uh, marked vehicles, or does it include some unmarked vehicles? Uh, there's only one that's unmarked, and that's the Texas Vehicle. Okay, so you have 10, 10, and 1, is that right? We have 10 marked and 1 unmarked. Okay. Um, now, in 20, 2018, 28, 2017, you were programmed to get one new vehicle. No, we didn't buy any new vehicles in 2017. We received four in 2016. Okay, did you turn in four? We did. We, we turned in four vehicles. All the trailers we did. Okay, so the numbers are not quite as egregious as I thought because <coughs> back in 2000, there, you had seven vehicles. Now you're up to 10 plus one. Well, believe me, I knew, okay. and this was seven. So, in in uh, ten years, it's gone uh, up about fifty percent, hasn't it? Some of the vehicles, a little under fifty percent. Just an observation, Chief. Okay. 
But there's going to be in, in no, 20, I, Don, you all start, can I just say something? What? In 2019, that's when these are all paid off, right? Yeah. Right, so we should only have to buy two, two cars. This year? No, in 20. No, not this year. I'm talking about when, when, these, ca when these cars, the next time we buy cars, it should only be two because we've already placed one earlier. Then what, what, why do we have a, a line item in here for 29,290? That's our yearly payments. Early lease payment. lease right. payments, John. Yeah. Lease okay. Payments, yeah, for the leases. So you haven't gained any number of vehicles in, since the last two years, is that right? No, we have not. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Your equipment going to the number of radar units that we currently have. So we're in the process of, uh, we've written some grants for radars and we're in the process of rotating out the radars that either don't work uh, or that don't repair for us and replacing them with new radars. That's the same as essentially the same deal that uh, we get the supply line with the 50 cent max this year was frozen at 50 acres. So basically you want to have each of the patrol vehicles and supervisor vehicles to have their own I, I, yeah, individual yeah, units. Okay, uh, 800. You got any uh, training that you're going to send the captain to? Good idea. <laughs> that's good. I'm glad. Okay, that's it uh, on the police. Uh, do you have anything else, Chief, to do on the... Just, just uh, <coughs> should we look at those capital outlay lines, the MDTs? Or What's that? Yeah. Yeah, we can go do that now if you want to. Hold the cash. Yeah, okay. Uh, in general fund? General fund, yes. Uh, capital improvements. Oh, God. I'll take your word for it. Capital outlays, it's towards the back. Yeah. So, We're in capital. Oh, so we're looking for MB General Fund. Mm -hmm. yeah. Where are we looking for? Mobile data terminal. Oh, got it. Yeah. Right there. It's only uh, forty-five thousand dollars. Twenty-five. So we've got the mobile data terminal, the IMC mobile, and the e-ticket unit. I think the chiefs talked about those. You guys have questions? No, no, I have, I have none. I just, uh, the, the MDT 45504, do you remember the number on the grant on that? Uh, you have the, ch captain has the. Uh... Okay, and um, the next one down is the uh, IMC mobile. Okay. The other? Okay. Great. That's it for me, John. Thank you. Okay. Chief, when you get these things in, your, in the cruises, will the officers still have to write out warnings and all that stuff, or can they just type it in and it'll be sent right into your system? Or That's a great question, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the last one gave you all of what you just said. Uh, the MDTs are, are really going to be, uh, aside from uh, what I just described in terms of communication content and how they're going to track the rest of the state, uh, they'll also be back boxed. Uh, computer is also back with those buses and those abilities. Uh, right at some of these doorsteps, uh, and then uh, as soon as theoretically 
you see eventually, like you said, you had to pull into the police department, but you think eventually maybe if they're out on Route 28, they can send it right from there and everything pretty much? You do that? Okay. Star Wars type of stuff, but but the uh, the reality is that this this uh, technology has been out uh, almost now for 20 years. I think it's been around in the state for the last 10. This this, this this is this is this is this is really um, a good product and it's a good piece of equipment to have. I wouldn't put something before this committee if it wasn't worthy. Does, uh well, does it tie in with the uh, National Crime Information Center? Yes, it ties directly. It so, ties into that. Yes. Right. Yep. So, you got somebody who committed a homicide out in uh, California. You, you know, and there's a warrant out from you can pick up on. That is, I think, eventually the way the entire first net in the J1 system is heading. It isn't there right. yet, but that's a very good that that's a very good analogy. So, long term, probably within three to five years, an officer could be roadside on 28 speaking to somebody from Delaware or speaking to somebody from California or New York City about a suspect uh, or about an individual or about a warrant or whatever the case may be they'll be able to uh, have that connectivity uh, and in, in near real time. Does the state have a uh, uh, computer system a, a central computer system to, uh, in other words if a, a police officer plugs in a, a name into the MDT do you have a state database that uh, that contains yes. all the warrants and the uh, absolutely okay. so, so you're absolutely correct so the way the way that essentially would work is on a motor vehicle stop with um once he he, he scans that that license and if you look on the back of your driver's license you'll see the the barcode on the back really and you'll oh. be able to scan that right in uh, along with your registration and everything in the vehicle will pop up and and then along with that will any Will be any hits, any wants and warrants, and so forth and so on, and and it and it's near instantaneous. And uh, now look, there's you know there will be there will, there will be some road bumps and some speed bumps in here as the system gets going because it, it's it's new to us. And when I say new to us, it's new to the state of New Hampshire. But the good news is that that it that's been a lot of the older stuff has worked its way out, and and I think we're now on the glide path. And this is going to tie into the first net that I keep mentioning. Uh, which is going to be essentially a, a bandwidth, which is uh, going to be provided free of charge to law enforcement agencies here in the state of New Hampshire. That's really going to tie in all of law enforcement. And, and that's already happening in other states in the union. So pretty soon it, the whole thing is going to be completely connected in one large web. Good stuff. I have a question on... Um, oh, I'm sorry. Your, uh, the, the grant, they talk, uh, you talk about the 1920 grant, you say um, you may be able to take advantage of it. Is it a foregone conclusion that you will be able to take advantage of it? Which grant? These grants that you're talking the about? The grant on the, uh, this uh, MTV. Yes, we, we got approved for it. So it is, okay. Yeah, for the 16,000. So your 65, your 65,000 will, 
will be reduced by approximately 20 after the correct after the okay yes. how come you break it down by three different th three different things it's got the MDT the AMC and the e-ticket but yet they're all inclusive together how can you break it down that way we, we were told to do it that way by the town offices it's three different elements of the systems so okay okay very curious. curious one's the hardware one's the software and What's the third piece? Uh, there there are two, 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 two grants are for hardware and one, and one capital outlay is for the software. Mm -hmm. What do you think your learning curve is going to be on getting your offices up to speed on that? <coughs> yeah, um, I, I can't. Look, the state police are already doing it. It can't be that hard. <laughs> <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke. Um, We're all, I, I, We're I, all I, laughing. Pro you. Probably a couple of weeks <laughs> at, at best. Okay. <laughs> just, just, just fun in, Mr. Chairman. This is what tenants have to row to be close off the fence. <laughs> John, I have a couple of questions here. Yes, John. <clears throat> Number one, with these three items, which is really one packet. That's correct. Will you need any more to make this system the eat? No, th this 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 will this this will set up some, set us up quite nicely. To include what you need in the what I call Fortress Wolfboro. I'm sorry, say again. What I call Fortress Wolfboro, that includes the equipment you'll need there, and then ten of your cars. It's for eight of the cruisers. We might be able to do nine, but I, I think it's going to be eight. Eight, plus what you have to have in in, in your office. You don't have to have anything in your office? No. No, it's all in the cruisers. It's all in the cruisers. Pardon? It's all in the cruisers. It's all in the, everything is in the cruisers, nothing in the headquarters. But you can download everything. I already have computers in the, in the headquarters. There's already uh, computers. So the software that, that is in the, in the computers in the cruisers will, will tie into the software I already have. That you already at, at, have. at the headquarters. That's correct. Okay, the two so the two systems will talk to one another. Okay. So yes, that's what I was interested in. Yes. Because a couple of years ago, the fire department asked for some equipment, but then the next year they had to come back and ask for some phones so that they could use the equipment. Okay. I I, di I didn't want to hear anything like that. No. That what we, we what we try to do is put everything together. So this was one one because it's cheaper. It's it's cheaper to do it all in one package. Uh, yes. as opposed to, to piecemeal it out. And, and, and just so you know, we did look at, can, could we do this over the course to, to mitigate the expense? Could we do it over the course of uh, a couple of years? And, and, and uh, the smart money said, no, you got to do it all at one shot. It's cheaper. Uh, it's less expensive. Because remember, it won't be, I, I'm not going to be installing it. MacArthur won't be installing it. Uh, this is going to be technicians that really know what they're doing and putting this in and making sure it works. Thank you. Yep. Just, just one more thing. Do you have... Uh, you fingerprint people in your station house? Yes, we do. We do fingerprint people. And one of the things that I would eventually like to do is get a, an APHIS machine in there. I'm looking for one, um, but um, I don't want to have to. I don't want to have to buy one if, if 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 I can get one somehow through the state or free or what have you. But um, but does, yes, that, that's, does that interface with the state? In other words, if, yes, if, it does. if somebody doesn't identify themselves, can you pick them up as a liar through his fingerprints? That that's correct. Yes. And that would be that Avis machine? That would be the Avis machine. Very good. Okay. Thank you. What's that called again? H machine? It's an Avis machine. Avis. Okay. And, and what it does is it essentially, uh, it's an inkless fingerprint system that scans your fingerprints in and they go right in immediately into the database. So again, if you're, you know, if there's any launch or warrants or, or what have you, then you get an automatic hit. But it, it, what it, what it allows us to do is be efficient, right? Process people quickly, um, you know, to, to, to move on through the process. So when I make an arrest on somebody, that takes the officer, you know, off the street for a period of time. That might be 30 minutes, 45 minutes, or in the case of a DWI, it could be three hours. Um, we want to get people processed quickly, get them in and out. The other thing it does is if somebody comes in that needs them for, uh, for a professional license, we can get them in and out with, without, without too much time. And what's the turnaround on, on a liar? How long does it take to, for you to find out he's not the person he said he was? Um, so with, with regular fingerprint cards, you, you could be there for five to ten minutes. 
Just, just fingerprint them. What do you fax them? You fax them uh, upstate or, or no? Upstate? No, we've got to mail them. Wow. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. So, in your scenario about someone uh, being stopped and prosecuting a um, or arresting a, uh, a felony charge, will this system expedite the handling of it at their eight o'clock deadline at the courtroom? Yes, um, it, it 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 can and it will. Uh, definitely do that. The, and just so you know, the felonies first. Um, we're, we're we're trying to get to the point where we're we're doing it all electronically. Uh, but even even with doing it electronically, we we run into problems. Okay, we all set on the uh, general fund capital outlay. You don't have anything else on that sheet, do you? Just the, uh, the stuff, the few things we just talked about. Okay. Let's move on to, uh, let me see. Communications. Communications, that sounds good. Communications. Yes, Okay, uh, 100 series. Um, I have a question on 114. So the police commission has authorized five full-time dispatches. Is that, is that a change or is that an ongoing? So we had some, um, we had some, some uh, personnel that left the agency and then we hired uh, new personnel. Okay. So no, no changes to transfer them. Okay. I'm just curious then, uh, the group health insurance, did that change because there's a change there with an employee from uh, single to uh, family what, or something what, like what that? What line do you want? 210. And that's why that's up, okay. Yep. Yeah, we can't change it now, so. Anything else in the 200 series? Three hundred. Uh, Chief, will the uh, ongoing subscription that you talked about thing, is that going to show up in other purchase services and communications? Where is that going to show up? I know we're not paying for it now. I just want to know where we're likely, that subscription you talked about for the MBT. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to go in the communications budget. It'll come yeah. on, okay. Yeah. Thanks. And, uh, are we on the threes yet? Uh, 300. Okay, three, so 390. Uh, uh, we've got other purchases. We've got um, your request at 14. The town manager says okay, and the board of selectmen so far you expended um, 82. Uh, 2016, you did nine. How, I wonder why we're even going up there. We're going up to uh, 766, $765. I wonder why you guys said go ahead and do that. I think you've got something new there, right, Chief? So we have, um, as, you, as you see the list there, the Tritech spots, Acorn, Generator, mm -hmm. um, your spots terminal, we haven't been billed for that. We have to put it in the line because the state can bill us, 
They just they have not noticed each year. It's often on students. It's very very. Sometimes they go and sometimes they don't. I I, I, I wish I had a better answer for you. <laughs> we were told by the um, communications uh, supervisor that we will be billed as the coming years come come in as we move forward, as they told her in her last training. Huh. I think they forgot this year. <laughs> okay, uh, 400 series. I guess that's why the smart me are, smart remark about the state police, huh? Well, once they see this, they're gonna they're gonna know that they're gonna build us. Get out of there. Yeah. Uh, Eight Five hundred, uh, six hundred. Seven hundred. Okay, uh, 800. Okay, that's it on uh, communications. We have next uh, animal control. Animal control. Present <coughs> <coughs> animal. Thank you. Okay, animal control. Uh, One hundred series. Control. Okay, any questions on the one hundred series? <coughs> Two hundred series. series. So big jump between actual expenditure in 2016 and 2017. That's correct. And that that's uh, due to which line, Steve? Uh, it was uh, yeah, the, the, 380. Uh, 380. Oh. Yeah, the expenditure there is due to the Tina Fey case. The ACO was intimately involved in that. She's just on the your details in column five. I just, just, just a general question. It says for a maximum of six days on the canine. And then if you look over to B, does that automatically go into effect after six days? <coughs> the, where the fee of $100 becomes due? 
Is that all that they give the dog is six days to, to be located or? That's correct. That's what the contract. That's our contract with the humane. Right, but so if, if the uh, animal control officer brings a dog up there, the person that owns the dog only has six days before it becomes euthanized or? No. Okay. No. Hey, uh, 600. Eight hundred. Uh, any questions on animal control? Okay, I think that's all we have with you, Chief. Do you have any other questions of us or anything? No, I don't. I saw, uh, I enjoy the uh, coffee with the Chief and the, and the Captain. That's a good, I like that on, to watch that. That's good. Uh, I'm glad I can bring some entertainment into your life. <laughs> <laughs> that's the kind of life I live now, so. <laughs> we, we need to talk about what you're watching on TV, John. <laughs> uh, you mentioned about the possibility of working on a new public safety building down the road. I'm new public safety building coming down the road. Yes. Are you working with the? Intimately. CIP? Intimately. Okay, good. No point and, of me. and have been. <laughs> Still it. I, I haven't They're working intimately haven't on yet. the building or? I haven't yet signed up. What, what are we looking at? 20, 20, 2022. 2022. 2022. 2022. And I don't want to talk anymore about that tonight. Okay. <laughs> Good. Good. Chief, uh, you or the captain or the commissioners have anything else you want to talk to us about? Okay. Thank you, folks, for coming. Appreciate your time and everything. Have a great. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Same to you, sir. Merry Christmas. Happy Merry holidays. Christmas. Okay, so I think. Uh, before we jump into the minutes, do you have anything, Mr. Town Manager, you want to bring up? Not really, but Pete needs to vote those uh, changes and the reductions in the health. Okay, good, Peter. Uh, everyone should have a copy of the uh, current cost of the health insurance, health benefits for all the departments. Yes. Yeah. And it looks like uh, the town's got a fairly nice contract where it's, we're going to have a decrease of $17,012. And I guess if no one has any questions, we'll just need a motion to uh, uh, instruct the town manager, Peter, to uh, adopt these rates and to make the particular adjustments in each budget. Mr. Chairman, so I moved. moved. Well, so moved. Okay. And we've got a second? Okay. Second. Uh, any further discussion? Seeing none, the motion is to uh, instruct the town manager, or Peter, his appointee, whatever, to uh, adopt the uh, rates for 2017 with a decrease of $17,012 within the 2018 budget. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion carries. Good, good thing you voted it because I think I already signed the contract. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Reconsider hey, the motion, Mr. Chairman. I provided you with an updated budget status summary and that includes all of those health insurance. This has the changes reflected in it. Okay. Vote against the decrease. Uh, anybody of you who had enough of this uh, e-ticket and are not planning to use the papers anymore, I'm desperately short of no paper. To use virgin paper at home. Thank you. Just Are we starting the annual John Burt paper drive again? <laughs> Are we starting the annual John Burt paper drive again? Yes. So if I, if I look at this, Peter, right, right now the uh, general fund shows a 2.95% increase or 387000 over last year. Yeah. That's correct. 
can you can you break that down to give us a, is it a majority of the salaries the salary adjustments uh, or the raises? No, I, I could do that. I okay. I think I'd like to see that. Yeah, just how that 387 breaks down. Okay, now Leanne had us do some minutes to approve some minutes. Let's knock that out real quick. Let me just bring them up on my. I move we approve all minutes. I second. Bring the bed up here. I'm just trying to be speedy here. The faith of Leanne got him right. Relatively. Got the minutes of 11-8, uh, eight, November 8, 2017. Do we need to make any changes in those minutes? I'm good. If nobody sees any, could they get a motion to uh, approve the minutes as written? No, no. Second. Second. Discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of adopting the minutes of 11, 11 8. Please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, uh, 11 9. Minutes of 11 9. I move that we approve. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes of 11 9, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And the last ones are 11-14. A motion we approve if no changes are found. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? <coughs> Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes of November 14, 2017, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Sorry, I can't make that motion. You weren't here? I wasn't here. Okay. I just remembered. Can someone else make a motion to that? So moved. Okay, and a second. No, sir. Okay, all those in favor of approving the minutes of 11 14 2017, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained. Uh, motion to approve. Motion to approve. Okay, does anyone have anything else? Yes. Yes, John. Hard to revisit, uh, hard to revisit Parks and Rec <coughs> admin. But I have quite a lot of information that nobody's seen because I've made it. Uh, I beg your pardon? Christine, I received an email from Christine Holland late this afternoon to ask me to revisit it. Yeah. But um, I'd like to see if we can't put it on the schedule right now sometime. Did she get any preference when she was available? Do you have all your stuff prepared? Yes. Okay. Does anyone have any issues with revisiting it? It's not tonight. Uh, not tonight, but on a, another time. What looks best, Leanne, on our schedule, do you think? Water and sewer doesn't seem to take us an awful lot, does it? Yeah, I'd say I agree. Water and sewer. Okay, we'll schedule if she's available for the water and sewer night. September 4th at the library. Okay. Now, John, I have, as I said, I have quite a lot of information. I've given a copy of it to Bob, and he's going to review it and tell me it's full of crap or it's pretty revealing. And so uh, that's an English term. After you review it. So I will provide it at our next meeting. So did you want to retract your concerns? I beg your pardon? Did you want to retract your concerns of the 100 series made uh, two weeks that's ago? Right. Okay. 100 and 200 series is all in, in the admin section. Full time. Yeah. All right. Okay. If you look here, it's the end. No. It's okay. Thanks. It's almost <laughs> over. Three. Can I get a motion to adjourn it for all set? You got one. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. aye.